Thank you so much for staying with us here on The Body Show on E! This Women's Month, we are focusing on practical barriers to gender equality. To unpack all of this, we are joined by Legal Wise South Africa's CEO, Siva Gengan, as well as Teresa Yates, who directs the ProBono.org. A very good morning, ladies. Welcome to The Morning Show. Uh, Siva, let me start with you. What sort of challenges uh, are women facing with the idea of gender discrimination? Uh, William, thank you for having us again on your show. Um, so women in South Africa worked hard for equal protection under the law. But unfortunately, women still encounter some barriers that they must overcome when dealing with equality, especially in the workplace. Some of the challenges involved relate to the notion that some roles and areas of law are meant solely for women. And uh, women are unsuited um, to positions purely because they happen to be female. And of course, the reverse also applies. Um, the second challenge revolves around the salary gap between men and women, where they hold the same positions and are doing the work, whilst women obviously receive lesser pay for the same job. Fortunately, the law has developed to an extent to provide for gender equality in the workplace. But it is vital for women to know about these laws in order that they can enforce it. So even though laws exist to protect women, there seems to be a disparity between the aims of the law and the actual implementation um, thereof. Right. And I imagine, Teresa, you'd like to add here, because as what Siva's just saying, that there seem to be a lot of these challenges. But how do you propose we address them, Teresa? Well, I think the, that um, addressing historical um, challenges with women's um, women's empowerment and and gender equality takes a commitment from the state from the highest levels of the state it takes coordination between different um, state departments because um, it's not one just one area of um, of life and uh, social life um, political life economic life where women are are um, discriminated against and are lagging behind behind men in this uh, in in this country so um, we have uh, reasonable policies and legislation in South Africa we have a constitution that recognizes um, women's equality so it really does take um, real commitment by the state and it takes also the state to work um, closely with civil society organizations to understand issues at the grassroots at the you know at the at women at to understand what women are experiencing within their homes and in their communities in order to fashion um, solutions that are sustainable and, and long-lasting. We, obviously, we can't um, expect the state to do everything. It has to be a coordinated um, approach to ensuring um, women's safety and women's equality in South Africa. And obviously, Teresa, thank you for that. We are working against historical patriarchal um, systems that have been in existence for a very, very long time. Sivan, I'm going to come back to you. Um, has there been any progressive um, thinking in addressing these issues for gender equality and the pay gap in particular in the workplace? Absolutely. So government has taken and continues to take strides towards resolving gender discrimination and to give adherence to everyone's right to equality, as guaranteed by Section 9 of our Constitution. Now, one such example is the implementation of the National Policy Framework for Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality. Now, the purpose of this policy is to establish a clear framework and vision for gender mainstreaming across laws, uh, across policies and across procedures. One of the main objectives under the policy is to advocate for the promotion of new attitudes, new values and behaviours, as well as to create a culture of respect for women's rights. However, in the long run, the policy details um, uh, both long and short-term mechanisms to foster gender justice and equality um, for women. Uh, thank you for that point, Siva. Uh, Teresa, let me come to you then. Have these policies been enacted on the ground? Do we see any difference from women? Well, I think the, um, the short answer is that um, there has been um, some progress. Um, so I don't want to, to say that there's been um, 
we can't say that there's been no progress with regards to women's advancement, um, but we still we still have a long way to go. So um, so while um, while the policies and legislation do create a framework for um, for women to 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 advance in South Africa. Um, it's not it's not always um, recognized by the people who are in positions to ensure that these policies and legislation actually um, come alive for women. Um, obviously, South Africa also has a um, uh, a huge problem with with violence against women and girls, and um, and I don't think there's any policy which can um, eradicate eradicate that. So again, you need you need a committed state um, that just doesn't um, point to what's on paper and doesn't just um, articulate a um, empty commitments to ensuring that women that women are safe and and have and have access to their rights, but that have um, that are ensuring that those people who are put into place at all levels are truly committed to a vision and a purpose in South Africa that actually um, supports, protects, and promotes women's rights and women's equality. Right, let's talk about the hashtag um, Our Stories Matter, Dialogue with Women in Law webinar. Uh, obviously, it ends tomorrow, and it's the final uh, leg of the four part series, uh, Siva. Talk to us briefly about the series and what the aim was. What were you guys trying to achieve with this? So essentially, the four part uh, webinar series seeks to empower women through the sharing of stories. I think it's important to recognize that our stories matter. And the stories that we tell today have the ability to shape our tomorrows. So LegalWise South Africa, in partnership with ProBono.org, lined up four phenomenal women from the legal fraternity who have achieved success in their particular niche area of the law to share their stories. And the webinar series um, sought to give voice to women, particularly those in law, to share their stories on a digital platform that is open informal and conversational with the aim of inspiring current and future generations. Right, Teresa, let me come to you. The hashtag, Our Stories Matter, have, according to you, uh, the objectives been met? Um, I think they absolutely have been met um, because uh, one of the main objectives was to share the stories of inspirational women or have inspirational women share their stories about how they um, how they have um, overcome challenges, um, um, the successes in their careers, um, and and to give some um, some inspiration to particularly younger women in the legal profession um, to give women ideas around um, what kind of career paths they might take um, with their with um, with their law degrees and their and their legal studies. So I think in that regard, it's absolutely been um, a huge su success. We understand that um, these are not um, isolated um, personal experiences; that they are experiences that women um, that women that women go through because of systemic problems with gender inequality. And once we understand that, we can, you know, we can deal with those problems. We can overcome the challenges, and we can have our voices heard when we try and um, call for real solutions that um, that actually um, change society in a way that women have um, a clear path to pursue what they'd like to pursue um, in their private life as well as in their professional lives. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time this morning, ladies. That is Siva Kengen, who is the CEO of LegalWise South Africa, and of course, Teresa Yates, who is the National Director of ProBono.org. We're taking a quick ad break. We'll be back with lots more here on The Morning Show. Stay with us.